Good morning. I'm Dominique Newland. So glad to be with you on this Friday morning as we have officially completed the first full week into the new year. Hours after Arizona Governor Doug Ducey lifted COVID-19 measures yesterday, Yuma's mayor also following suit. Yeah, what? I couldn't hear you through my gold medal. <laughs> I wonder how hard it really is to qualify. You think I could do it? Or in crime news, new from overnight, two people are facing murder charges following the disappearance of a Yuma man. 31-year-old Derek Runyon went missing in March. Well, new details from overnight, the El Centro Fire Department responded to a fire at an abandoned building on West Commercial Avenue near 3rd Street. ECFD said the first unit arrived on the scene at around 9.30 p.m. It's going to be back in the 90s today. Oh, yeah. but said it with a bang. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be warm. Yeah, it's going to hit us all in the face this morning. We start the week off with some good news. In the fight against COVID-19, Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine will start being administered as soon as today. Hey, everyone, so I'm here live in the newsroom, and as you can see through these masks, we have a new setup going on. Yeah, Panda Dom here for the day for our Halloween morning, and I'm joined by these two. We got a little scary, a little kind of scary action going on. Still headlines with more Americans getting vaccinated. Some people are calling for mask regulations to be eased or removed. That includes the Phoenix area where there's a parental push to free the face. Clocks will spring forward one hour, although it won't affect Arizona. For our California viewers, unfortunately, you're going to lose an hour of sleep overnight. Stretch of Nevada Highway last December, killing five and injuring four was sentenced on Wednesday to a minimum of 16 years in Nevada State Prison for driving under the influence of methamphetamine causing death. Weather-wise, we made it to the middle of the week, and it's going to be a windy one, like kind of yesterday. Almost got blown away a few times. <laughs> yeah, I think my trash can got knocked over again. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was like the rest of us, too. Unfortunately, that's going to be the case for today, so hold on to your hats. Uh, we're going to begin by taking a live look outside. Good morning, everybody. So it is the holiday season, and with that comes a lot of fun, festive performances, one of those being the Nutcracker. Hello, everyone. I am joined by Twitch today. We're talking about Ellen's Game of Games. Such a fun show. House Democratic leaders once again expected to unveil this legislation today that would provide millions of U.S. families as much as $3,600 per child as part of President Joe Biden's relief package. Dramatic footage caught on camera showing human smugglers dropping two girls under the age of five over a 14-foot border fence. Governor Doug Ducey said in a tweet on Monday how Arizonans should expect a COVID-19 vaccine as early as next month. According to the governor, uh, the vaccine will be available mid to late Late December. An exciting journey that we've been following since the beginning. Local country singer Tanner Gomes made it through the battle rounds on NBC's hit show The Voice. Safe and healthy out there, social distance, support local businesses, do all that good stuff. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday. If you look at him at first glance, 17 year old Rich Jari is a strong, healthy teen with a love for fitness. Listen, I'm gonna like jump up and then climb with just my arms. But like the saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. The human native, who currently ranks 89th in the world for his age division in CrossFit, was once told he may never walk or talk again. On April 29th, 2018, Rich was involved in a quad bike accident that would turn his world upside down. Me and my friends were on some quads and we were racing and we ran through a brick wall probably anywhere from 25 to 35 miles per hour, and none of us were wearing helmets. Rich flew over the quad, hit the wall, and was covered in bricks. A bystander ran over to help until an ambulance arrived. I think it took like seven or eight dudes to hold me down because my adrenaline was running so much too that I was just like moving all over the place. They took me to the Yuma Hospital, and then I was like wrapped up, and I lost a lot of blood. A call no parent ever wants to get. Phone rang, it was like, uh, is this really happening? Not my son, no. And then uh, we, uh, we raced over there to the scene and to see all the ambulance and the fire trucks there. It was, it was like, a, it was an odd moment, like, is this for real? How's he doing? Is everything okay? And then when you see, like, what's really going on, it's like, oh, yeah, this is, this is for real. This is bad. This isn't good, you know? Due to the severity of the crash, Rich had to be flown to Phoenix Children's Hospital immediately for a craniotomy. Basically, it's like when you're doing the surgery in, inside of the skull, like almost like with the brain. And so what happens is they make an incision from each side of my head. You can kind of see the scars a little bit. 
And so they essentially they pulled my face down and pulled the skin back on my head to take my skull off because my forehead was completely indented in. It was shattered. His mom and dad having to approve all the surgery decisions via phone as they drove to Phoenix to meet their son. They, they start explaining to us, telling you, like, you know, he's, he, he, you know, he might not talk again. He might not even be able to talk at all. Before the accident in 2018, Rich was ranked 66th globally and 38th in the nation in the CrossFit online qualifier for his age. And it was his fitness that ultimately helped him recover. <sighs> The time of his training, he was at a high point where he was training for the CrossFit Open. So they told us that that because of his his body knowing how to recover from those strenuous workouts, his body went into survival mode from the accident, and that's why he was able to recover so fast. Only in the hospital for 12 days, the athlete and Rich never faded away. Even with the bruises and bumps, Rich was itching to get back in the gym. He was actually upset because he couldn't work out. He was upset about why he like, could. That's my son. Yeah, he wanted. Yeah, and I already knew. Slowly but surely, the team was back at it, doing light movements until he was cleared from his doctor. I still got a pretty good finish. Like, I wasn't disappointed with it. I think I ranked like 50th that year too. 50th in the world, by the way, the humble athlete turned a setback into a comeback, pushing harder than ever before. My goal is just to be the best that I can be and push myself every day. And then anything like the CrossFit Games, the online qualifier, those are just all byproducts of my goal. A goal with the help of his longtime family friend and coach who's been working with Rich since he was 12. He has a, he has a great work ethic to be good at. CrossFit and at a certain level, you, you have to have a certain work ethic to, to behind that, you know, and he, and he has that. And I think uh, the post accident kind of gave him that little push, that little extra push that he wanted or needed, you know, so it's been it's been incredible to see. With a strong support system and even stronger faith in God, Rich's dad and family are thankful to have their son in good health again, doing what he loves. Very, very thankful for that, you know. I think it's it's awesome when I see like kids like that that really want to do something for themselves and you know they're going to do good. They're going to do well, you know what I mean? Rich is now training to qualify for the CrossFit Games in July. Lifting, pushing, and working his way to the top. But he stays grateful to even be capable of pushing his body to limits that at one point seemed impossible. I'm just super thankful for being able to still be able to do this at the level that I'm able to do this and just be able to recover. Because I understand like some people would have like different um, outcomes of the situation that I was in. So I was just blessed to be able to keep on doing this and stay healthy and strong. This is just this is like, this is just the teen level. So then once you get to the adult level, it's a lot bigger. It's like a bigger world over there. So definitely love to compete over there too.